Hey everybody, what up? All right, so I'm just checking in, uh, checking out how you guys are doing. Everybody's, how are you doing? Um, I'm doing good, personally speaking. So life is good. Um, honestly, life is really good. Uh, so, and for really not not too many particular reasons either, but uh, life is definitely good. Um, so anyway, w this video, I'm just gonna talk about, I guess, just to. I don't really want to talk about me, honestly, like uh, uh, even about my career, uh, but I guess I'll keep it a, a, to programming. So I'm just going to give some like general over overall discussion about programming. I'm not going to edit the video. I don't even care. Um, YouTube has been something where it was like, I, I feel like there, there, there was this point where it was like, I just couldn't come up with any sort of content because I had to like edit and like every piece of video I was doing, I was like editing it and editing it. And um, I'm not doing that anymore. Like, I don't have time, really. So I'll do that for my tutorials because, like, a tutorial should be edited and all that. But, like, if I'm going to shoot the crap with you guys, I, you know, I'm just going to do it all in one sitting and, and just say, hi, hey, what's up, you know. Um, so that said, uh, programming, right, in 2022, the pandemic. I, I haven't gone to the office in, like, three years, so... Uh, actually three years. It feels like three years. It hasn't been three years. Um, it, it was like right when the pandemic first happened. So it was two years, but it feels like three. I don't know why I said three. Um, I don't plan on going back to the office. Hopefully I don't ever have to. Um, I, I work at a different job. Um, so I actually said I wasn't going to talk about myself, whatever. Um, but just talking about programming in 2022, um, some of the things I, I, I find that um, where I'm at right now in my stage in my, in my life with... Uh, my career, I've been doing this like 12 years. And there's always a new challenge. And you know, there, there's always some new challenge. And it's funny because like, if you're gonna be a programmer, one thing that you're gonna have to be comfortable with is not knowing how to do something. Like we're always gonna get paid to, to have to figure stuff out. And we're figuring out problems that you don't know the answer to. And it, we could talk about what's the best language and what's the fastest server and how to like scale your architecture and all that. And it's, I don't know, they're just sort of pointless discussions because they're all high level concepts until you actually get in the weeds. And then once you get into the weeds, you're just trying to figure out the next problem. And that's what you get paid to do. So I think, um, I like being a programmer. Yeah, honestly, like th this job is pretty cool. You, you get paid a lot of money. And there's a lot of opportunity. You get constant recruiters like trying to like, you know, get you to work at some other place. And you just send, you know, we have the luxury of just like, okay, delete, delete, delete. And the, even if it's like great pay, great opportunity, delete, delete, delete. Like, you know, what a world we live in right now. So I know that that's easier said than done for a lot of people because everybody, you know, wants to know like, how do I get into the industry and all that stuff. And like, I don't have those answers, but you have to, uh, you, you have to build projects. And I would think though, because a lot of people that watch this channel are people that are learning how to code and they're like, well, how do I get in? And you know, how do I do it? Um, I've always said build projects. And if I were going to start right now, I would actually like jump into the cloud, man. I would jump into Azure AWS and whatever sort of project you want to build maybe even get into like literally writing your tickets and do your own little scrum agile methodology, read up on it, uh, build your tickets, build your epics, your user stories, your tasks. It might seem pointless, but like those are going to be some of the challenges that you're going to have to do once you get into the workplace, no matter where you go. And if your workplace doesn't have any of those things in place, it's probably not like a real programming job, but uh, or at least like a, a real corporate level software engineering type role. But that doesn't matter either. So maybe you get, you know, some sort of PHP gig or you're a freelancer or something. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I've always said, you know, go wherever the money is at. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would say, though, everything is like in 2022, everything is Azure and AWS and probably more AWS than Azure. So you got to learn you know, AWS Lambda or pipelines or, uh, you know, build specs, you know, it's like all these things that like, I don't even normally deal with. And, and you find yourself dealing with these things as you get higher up in the levels, I suppose. 
but what about like the front end frameworks, React, Review, Angular, all that stuff? How much time do you really spend with one of those things? Do you want to be like the Angular person or the uh, the React person wherever you go? You could probably do that, but like there's people that have been programming in React for a long time, so it, it, it will take years in any one of those things to become an expert. And I think you can kind of get lost in the weeds when you sort of do um, something like React. So if you're going to try to do React and like be the best possible React developer of all time, are you going to be able to build your full stack architecture? I guess you could use server side rendering with React, but uh, the thing is, is like, I think you're kind of better off just building a project, right? Like set up your server, Apache, Nginx, you know, pick one. You don't have to be a master in any one of those. If you don't want to do that, then you, you know, you, like I said, Azure, AWS, you're going to spend on virtual machines. Yeah, I'm sort of rambling now, I, you know, I, but I don't care. Honestly, I don't care. Um, the, there's just, there's endless opportunities with coding and you're never going to know all of it. So you might as well just start getting started with something. And I've always found in my earlier career that I was m very motivated as I saw my projects start to come together. So I would probably give a big piece of advice that if you're stuck on a particular programming problem, don't waste your time spinning your wheels and like, oh, I can't figure out why this, you know, this React code is throwing this exception, blah, blah, blah. Move on to SAS or something. Move on to actually set up, setting up your server. Build out some web components elsewhere uh, if you want to do that, assuming you want to do that. Um, build your actual wireframes like how is your website going to operate like what sort of database are you going to use like what sort of data should you be storing how are you going to retrieve that data what about caching um what about like stuff like local storage session storage you, you're not going to be an expert in all of that stuff and i would just say like as you build your project like if it's like i'm building this react website or you know and, and it looks like this page right here that is youtube you're gonna have to have a header right and there's going to be image formats. So you're going to learn about different image formats, JPEGs, PNGs. What are the differences between the two? Why would you use one over the other? Uh, what about the WebP format? That's a new image format. What about the buttons, right, on click events? So you're going to be dealing with click events with JavaScript. What about TypeScript? You could uh, start messing with TypeScript, build your website in TypeScript. There's no right and wrong answer, I don't believe. Not in programming, not after all these years. I I've seen architecture that is like way overly complex, way more complicated than it needs to be. In fact, I would describe most of the web these days is way more complicated than it needs to be. My philosophy these days, and I don't even have any desire to build any sort of business product anymore, um, or at least right now, I know that it's not gonna be that way forever. I do have my website, by the way, so like this is something, it took me a couple of months to build and and I know that some people have criticized this, like, oh, it's such a basic website. But you know what? I actually only spent a couple of months making this thing work. And there's a lot of stuff that went into it, and it only took me a couple of months. Why? Because I cut a lot of corners, and it's real sloppy. Like, this is real sloppy code. If I showed you the back-end code for this, it's not something that, like, I would, like, show a potential employer and be like, oh, look at how I wrote this code. It's using this, you know, factory pattern and this and that. No, I actually... And more impressed with how quickly I did it and the fact that it makes a lot of money or it, it doesn't really anymore but it's made um, I think my websites made like 35 40 thousand in the last two years or something like that I shouldn't even probably tell people that but it's not like that's impressive money not for a software engineer but a lot of people are like well how do I make money well you know obviously you have to have an audience on YouTube I don't even have that anymore but there's different ways that you can make money, right? And I think one of the ways that you do it is to solve business problems better than other people. And sometimes solving business problems better than other people is simply getting the job done faster and or uh, even if it's not perfect, right? I don't even know that, that perfect code exists. I, I don't know that I've ever seen it. I, I've seen tested code that's 100% code coverage 
where we spend 90% of our time writing tests, you know, versus actually building features and functionality. And the product is like no better than anything else, you know? I've seen websites that, you know, are using Tailwind or whatever. It's like, yeah, we're using Tailwind and this and that. And it looks like, you know, it looks like the same website I saw in like 2014. I don't know that it really matters, like, right? I mean, and even if you have a product, and I'm not trying to discourage anybody, but like, you know, some of the problems that we have as web developers, especially like if you're trying to get into the industry and you want somebody to actually see your product, then you have to start getting into search engine optimization, marketing, you might deal with something like AdWords or advertising on Facebook. I mean, there's all these business problems, right? And then that's even like the business side of it too. You can just go throw a website out there in your name and not have a business that's established to protect your personal assets in case somebody were to sue you. What about the IRS, right? Like all those things come into play when you're talking about being like a tech entrepreneur. Uh, I, I've actually, I wouldn't say that I'm like a tech entrepreneur. Well, actually I sort of am. Um, this company I've had is since 2000, 2011, and I do all my own taxes. I owe the IRS every single year. Um, I'm paying the IRS all the time. I pay the IRS, in my opinion, because I came from having nothing really. I feel like I pay the, the IRS a tremendous amount of money, and like it is more than the average person in the United States makes. So it's like I've come a long way, right? I, I feel like I've come a long way, and I'm really, really grateful for that, actually. I wish this website would do better. Um, I wish my, I wish I had more business sense maybe, um, but I am a go-getter, man. I've always been a go-getter. And I think that that is ultimately the best bet that you could possibly have when it comes to trying to get your foot in the door if you're not going to school for it. Because nobody's just gonna give you some sort of opportunity. You're gonna have to prove yourself. Another thing too is that a product is never done. Um, so even a website like this, right? Some, sometimes, and luckily, because like not that many people use it, I don't have to respond to emails. So I'm like only responding to emails. Uh, well, most of the time people aren't emailing me and I'd like to keep it that way, to be honest. Um, but those are things that like you have to do. Like if you're going to charge money and like, I have to give people money back sometimes. Like they're like, Oh, I don't like the product. I charge hardly anything for the amount of content that is on there. But, um, you know, money is relative, right? And, and what I charge could be a lot for a lot of people and it's very little for some or a lot of other people. So uh, there, there, there's certain work and things involved and business ideas and such that you have to be motivated to do. And I haven't been for quite a long time. Um, but when I talk about the money that this thing has made, I think the most impressive thing for me is that I did it so quickly and that it was like, yeah, $40,000 for like two months worth of work on the side, barely doing anything. Like if I think about the amount of actual coding hours that went into this entire um, architecture and infrastructure, I did it probably in like five actual days of work, you know, like five paid days. And why? Because like I didn't care about unit testing all of this crap. I didn't care about what framework or what design pattern or like exactly how to store my data or have like ux wireframes and um and mock-ups and all this stuff man i just built it you know i just started building it and it works like this speed thing right this this speed right here it's an ugly drop down i don't even have it styled why because i don't care somebody asked for this though and they were impressed because they asked for it one night and i said you know what i should have some sort of speed and i implemented it literally in in, in that night and it took me like an hour and a half because I was like, you know, I just need a drop down. And then if I want it to persist on every video, so they click a new video, how do I get it to persist? Well, I use local storage. So I'm like, okay, I knew about local storage and, and um, that's what I did. So you can see that the video speed is being stored in local storage on your browser. How did I know how to do that? That's 12 years of experience. And it was solving a business problem that I nev never really had to solve, but 12 years of experience, I was like, oh yeah, that's what they want. This is how I could do it very quickly and easily. And in the business world, we have tons of work that'll go into like, oh, how are we gonna solve this problem? You know, let's go ahead and have teams of people look at all these different, different avenues and areas of how we can do this and that and all that. And in my opinion, what it should be is like, 
you could just have somebody just, you know, do it real quick. You know what I mean? But we, but it doesn't work that way and nobody wants to work all their weekends and stuff. And like, it's, um, it's a, it's a crazy world we live in in programming. So I, I think, you know, the bottom line moral of the story is that you build a product and that's going to be the quickest way that you're going to get better. Um, solve each problem as you go. And when you get stuck on something, move on to another problem. If you're building a full stack website, there's going to be some other problem and you shouldn't spend your time like too much time spinning your wheels on some sort of bug because that's when things get frustrating. Especially for the hobbyist programmer, the hobbyist programmer that, you know, the, the, you have these like ups and downs. And I think in programming in general, you have these ups and downs. I used to get real excited about programming. I used to have these aha moments, light bulb goes off and I'm like, Damn, I figured that out. I'm so smart. I'm a genius. I'm going to be, I'm going to make millions because I figured this problem out. I'll figure out any problem. And we get tired. Um, the code starts like starting to look, you know, it starts to all blend together and you're not seeing the forest through the trees. You're missing a semicolon and that's all it is. Or you're trying to import something and you got a typo. And you could spend four, five, six hours looking at it and not figuring it out, you know? even as a senior developer. And that's why we try to bring in other people in the, in the workspace, like, hey, look at this code. You could go to Stack Overflow. Um, I think I've wasted way too much time with frustration. And um, now I'm getting texts. But yeah, with frustration. And uh, you know, I, I would just have been better suited moving on to another program uh, or problem. And another thing too is like one of the best things I can do as a programmer, I'm gonna keep getting these texts. Uh, one of the best things I can do as a programmer is step away from the program or problem and then come back. And like that is one of the most like tried and true methods of solving a problem I've ever had. Step away, come back, take a look at it, especially like if you're banging your head against the wall because I, you, you'll lose some, I feel like creativity, you'll lose passion and obviously motivation. And as I mentioned before, these ups and downs with, with programming, you're gonna have some really ups, right? And then naturally, like if you really like programming, you're gonna have like a, a dopamine rush in your brain of like, oh yeah, I really enjoyed solving this problem. And you know, I got, you know, I, I feel like I can do anything, right? And then you'll, you'll crash back down when you run into the next problem. And typically when you have ups, you're gonna have lightly, you know, slightly lowers, you know? And then ultimately you're trying to establish this baseline. So like some of the best programmers that are really happy with what they do day in and day out, I really think that they can step away a lot. They get satisfaction with programming because like they're enjoying solving the problem in of itself versus like the end goal, because there's never going to be some finish line. It's like, Oh, I'm some great programmer. I've done this for five years and I know how to solve every programming problem that there ever was, or I'm going to blend in and be able to work for any company I ever want. Uh, it doesn't really work that way and there's no finish line. So if we're going to do this for our entire careers, we have to actually have satisfaction in solving problems and building things. And, you know, just have a natural curiosity, like when we do run into these errors and we have these frustrations and how, how to solve them, like you can find, I think, satisfaction in the problem itself, even when things aren't going that well. So I'd much rather do that than like be like a, a plumber or an HVAC dude or a truck driver. And I've done all those things. So um, I'll, I'll continue to be a programmer at this point. So that's really all I got. I know I blabbed a lot, but if you're trying to get into the industry, you know, mastering React or being, a, a, you know, really good with HTML, that might be able to get your start. It might not. Um, but I would just say overall build a, a website if you're trying to be a web developer, build a game if you're trying to be a game developer, build a mobile app if you're trying to be a mobile app developer. There's going to be so many problems to solve. You don't have to be an expert in any one individual problem. And another thing too is um, take advice with a grain of salt, even my own. Um, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, the, the people that you think are the smartest in this industry are not nearly as smart as you think that they are. So. That's my perspective. That's what, that's what I've seen. So anyway, that's what I got. And uh, have a good night, everybody. Take care. I hope everybody's doing well. And goodbye.